All right. So I think the next four questions will be related to each other. That's how I group them. So I'll just do, do, do work with them as a group of questions. It looks like uh, I'm dealing with Ohm's law. So let me write it down to as a, have as a reference. So Ohm's quote unquote law. I add that scare quote. Because it's not real law. It's a description that happens to be a lot of materials, but not all materials. So it's law for the ohmic materials, <laughs> and not for anything else. So, so Ohm's law says this, that there's a relationship between voltage that you place across some material and the current that you measure across the material. And it says that they are linearly related and the linear coefficient that relates them is what we call resistance. So that's Ohm's law. Um, here it looks like we are given the voltage difference and the resistance and being asked for current. So we'll just uh, do uh, voltage. Wait, wait. Let me just write down all three versions of Ohm's law. So this is the version that solves for V. Uh, I'm doing algebra in my head to solve it for I. That's going to be voltage change over R. And somehow if we get a question asking for resistance, it'll be delta V over I. So I'll just use the correct version depending on the question. So here I got current in terms of voltage and resistance. 3 divided by 3.55. So uh, that's pretty high current, um, I think. The, any current that's like one ampere and high is, uh, it's a respectable sized current. In most uh, um, like a digital circuits, typical amount of current will be milliampere, not ampere. Okay, so here it says a register is connected in series with a power supply given voltage, and we are also given current and asked for resistance. Okay, that's this equation <laughs> that we should be using. Um, so voltage of 23.55 divided by the current, 0 0.5. So 47.11. Yeah, that, I guess, seems about right. Yeah, so, you know, this is not actually a pretty large, it, it's not a large resistance. The typical value of resistance you see in a circuit is like a kilo. So this is, is on the low side. And see, with a moderate amount of voltage, your current is less than an ampere. So, yeah. Okay, next to question. It says a uh, two kilo ohm register is connected across a D-cell battery. Okay, we are given resistance and voltage, uh, and we are asked for current. Ah, here it is. Oh, and let me do this thing. So um, they are giving us kilo ohm of a resistance and asking for current in milliamperes. And when you look at the units here, when you are dealing with those exact units, you know, so. It, you, uh, voltage in volt and resistance in kilo ohms. Um, the way the powers of 10 work out, this will give you unit of milliampere. So I actually don't have to do any unit conversion. I can just do 1.5 volts divided by 2 kilo ohm. That'll give me 0 0.75 milliampere. So like if by mistake you didn't account for units, uh, you'll get the right answer because <laughs> that's how... Uh, these are fairly uh, intuitive units to use in circuits context. Okay, uh, next and the last uh, question in this group. Oh, yeah. All right, so they're giving us some graphical information. So they are asking for resistance and they are saying the voltage across the uh, and the current through the register and the measurements are shown below. Okay, voltage is the y axis, current is the x axis. Um, I guess the resistance of the register is constant over the whole measurement. So let me just make it easy for myself and just to take the reading at the two extremes, at the zero, volt and current, at zero, uh, everywhere, <laughs> except for the resistor, the slope is not zero. Uh, and at the highest end, okay, I think the x value is like nine. So we are calculating the resistance here uh, with the current of about nine ampere. And the voltage that we are applying is pretty high voltage of about 900 volts. 
So with those, your resistance should be 100 ohm. And after that answer, let me just, uh, oh, I guess I just did it in my head. Um, let me just tell you uh, um, why it's uh, unrealistic. So uh, in the same chapter, we cover the um, formulas for electric power. So when you look at formulas for electric power, uh, one of the expressions that you can use is this. Uh, it ties fairly closely with the definition of power in terms of change in energy per unit time and all that. Uh, it's an amount of current which gives you the number of charge per unit time times voltage. And the uh, you know, charge per times voltage gives you the amount of change in energy. So here I have both the voltage, 900 volts, and the current, 9 ampere. Let me just do the product. 900 times 9. I have 81,000, uh, oh, sorry, 8,100 or 8.1 uh, 8.1 kilowatt. And what I will tell you is that at your home, you have, you should have no device that uses 8,100 watt ever. I think a microwave typical power usage is like 1,600 watt when it's on and maybe electric stoves might go a third or half that. Um, so with this much, um, this much power, if you are powering it from your 110 volt circuit, uh, the amount of current you will need to pass through is 73.6 ampere. Uh, most the circuits trip at like a 20 ampere. Uh, maybe high current ones will trip at 40 ampere. This is so high that unless it's the main trunk of a circuit breaker in your house, like it's gonna trip circuits. So it's, uh, again, that's why I'm saying it's unrealistic. It's too high. 